Hello, can you hear me? I was born on January 8, 1942, exactly 300 years after the death of Galileo. I was never more than about halfway up the class. My classwork was very untidy, and my handwriting was the despair of my teachers. But my classmates gave me the nickname Einstein, so presumably they saw signs of something better. I had six or seven close friends, and we used to have long discussions and arguments about everything, from radio-controlled models to religion. One of the things we talked about was the origin of the universe, and whether it required a god to create it. I was 20 in October 1962, when I arrived in Cambridge at Dam. I had come to Cambridge to do cosmology, and cosmology I was determined to do. At that time, it became clear something was not quite right with me. Already in Oxford, I had noticed that I could no longer row a sculling boat properly. The Christmas after arriving in Cambridge I went home. It was a very cold winter and my mother persuaded me to go skating on the lake in St. Albans, even though I knew I was not up to it. I fell over, and had great difficulty getting up again. My mother realized something was wrong and took me to the doctor. I spent weeks in Bart's hospital, and had many tests. They never actually told me what was wrong, but I guessed enough to know it was pretty bad, so I didn't want to ask. In fact, the doctor who diagnosed me washed his hands of me, and I never saw him again. He felt that there was nothing that could be done. At first I became depressed. I seemed to be getting worse pretty rapidly. There didn't seem any point working on my PhD, because I didn't know if I would live long enough to finish it. But then the condition developed more slowly, and I began to make progress in my work. After my expectations had been reduced to zero, every new day became a bonus, and I began to appreciate everything I did have. While there's life, there is hope. And there was also a young woman called Jane, whom I had met at a party. Getting engaged lifted my spirits, and I realized, if we were going to get married, I had to get a job and finish my PhD. I began to work hard. My work on black holes began with a eureka moment, a few days after the birth of my daughter. I decided to write a popular book. I thought I might make a modest amount to help support my children at school and the rising costs of my care, but the main reason was because I enjoyed it. While I was writing it, I visited CERN and I became critically ill with pneumonia and lost my voice due to a tracheotomy. But I kept putting a lot of effort into the book because I think it's important for scientists to explain their work. I never expected a brief history of time to do as well as it did. Not everyone may have finished it or understood everything they read. But they at least got the idea that we live in a universe governed by rational laws that we can discover and understand. It has been a glorious time to be alive and doing research in theoretical physics. Our picture of the universe has changed a great deal in the last 50 years, and I'm happy if I have made a small contribution. The fact that we humans, who are ourselves mere collections of fundamental particles of nature, have been able to come this close to an understanding of the laws governing us and our universe is a great triumph. I want to share my excitement and enthusiasm about this quest, so remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see, and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. And however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do, and succeed at. But if you get stuck, it's no good getting furious. 
you just have to keep thinking about the problem while working on something else. It matters that you don't just give up. While there's life, there is hope. Seize the moment. Act now. Be brave. Be determined. Overcome the odds. It can be done. I will end on a quote from one of my favorite science thinkers. The late great Mr. Spock. Live long and prosper.